we are also uh, compliant um, in terms of the product is Shara compliant. Later, I will explain uh, a bit more in details. Next slide, please, Kevin. OK, so uh, this is the um, three uh, quantitative competitive edge of uh, BCX. Uh, a lot of uh, global traders would ask this. So hence, uh, the first uniqueness of our exchange is we are national stock exchange as compared to other commercial exchanges, uh, which are uh, not a national stock exchange. And being a national stock exchange, we are mandated by con uh, the country to uh, implement this VCM. And under our belt, we have close to nearly 1,000 listed companies. And the uh, listed companies uh, by uh, next year, um, main market will have to to disclose their um, enhanced uh, sustainable reporting uh, in a way of scope one, scope two, scope three uh, disclosure. So hence the shareholders, investors will, will have to take note of what's the next for these companies to decarbonize. So hence the carbon credits will be naturally uh, one of the options where a company could uh, reduce their carbon footprint. And then second, uh, we are probably announcing that we are Shara compliant, first world first Shara compliant carbon exchange. Uh, it's endorsed by um, FUSA uh, Sharia Committee. And what it means by Sharia compliance is often asked by uh, foreign foreign traders, uh, what does it mean by Sharia compliance? So basically there are two things that uh, the Sharia Committee is looking at. The asset must be, uh, you know, uh, must be um, halal and uh, Sharia uh, compliant. And so not, it's not, you know, the proponents doesn't have uh, gambling business by nature, you know, and, and stuff like that. Lah. And on the the second point is the there is no interest rate uh, and there is HIBA. So hence our cash custody account is uh, kept with the, an Islamic bank uh, account. Lah. Lastly, we, we do have a very stringent KYC process before the participant being onboarded to be a seller or a buyer. We will have to uh, have their SSM documents um, and the audited financial and other beneficial owners details so that we do a, a KYC check and make sure they are not in the sanction list and so on that. So on the project carbon credit side, we also check the project proponents, make sure there's no adverse news on this project and the project is of high quality as well. So, the, so that the buyer seller will, will trade confidently and that will reduce the counterparty risk. Next slide, please. OK, so this is a very nice photo that uh, we have taken on the launch uh, 9 of December. So we were very happy to have um, our newly minted Minister of Natural Resources, Energy and Climate Change, uh, YB Nick Najmi, uh, to officiate the, the event. Next slide, please. So during the event, uh, we were very happy that uh, YB has clarified three points which the markets uh, really needed it. So the main three points is the point one, two, three. So the first point is Malaysia carbon credits can be sold to a foreign buyer under the BCM, provided that the carbon credit is not meant for the other countries NDC. NDC, that means naturally determined uh, contributions. Um, the, the carbon footprint nation, national level and the carbon footprint in the corporate level is different. So what it means here is the carbon credit can be sold to the foreign corporates for the corporate offsetting purposes, but not for their respective countries and they see the national uh, carbon footprint offset purposes. Uh. So we'll say it's a totally different framework. Second point, um, carbon project that is traded on the BCX, uh, Bursa Carbon Exchange, it doesn't need to be approved by the ministry. Third point is uh, any Malaysia origin carbon projects, right? Once it's registered with international carbon registry, such as BARA, or other uh, second popular one is gold standard or other uh, registry. It doesn't need to be approved by the ministry, but it just needs to be reported to the ministry. Why it needs to be reported to the ministry is because the ministry will have to report to the UN uh, every year on the uh, national NDC, uh, national um, uh, determined contribution, the, the carbon footprint, a uh, national level to the UN. So they need the data for the reporting purposes. So um, uh, subsequently, you know, the ministry will continue to engage with the state agency and the federal agency to align the um, the, the VCM um, uh, framework and also 
the ministry is also in the midst of developing the NDC roadmap and the long term low emission development strategy. Next slide, please. OK, so um, this was uh, an announcement during the Invest Malaysia recent uh, conference. So the Prime Minister has announced that uh, the government has committed 10 million seeding fund uh, incentive to assure the demand for Malaysia carbon credits um, to be traded on the BCX. Uh, a lot of people will ask uh, about the details. Currently, it's still uh, being planned. And once the details is, uh, is ready, we will announce to the public. Uh. Next slide, please. OK, this is the possibly the, the best pictures of today. Um, these are the 14 participants who were onboarded um, before the auctions. So during the auction, uh, they uh, purchased the carbon credits generally from two projects that we have uh, listed. Um, so statistically, uh, among these 14 participants, uh, just over one third of them are financial institutions. And then uh, close to one third of them are basically public listed companies. Public listed companies, they are uh, here participated in the auctions. They are all FTSE for goods constituents uh, companies. There's a very good uh, sign. And the balance of the one third would be the oil and gas and the SME. So it's very well balanced as compared to the auctions of other exchanges. There could be a lot of GLCs or maybe they are all foreigners. Hence here, they are all Malaysian companies. And they are they are very well balanced with different sectors and different uh, sectoral. OK, um, next slide, please. OK, so these are the two projects that we that was listed in the, on the, during auctions and that were these are the carbon credit that were purchased by the 14 successful bidders just now la, in the list. So allow me to quickly explain uh, what are these uh, projects about. So the left side is the global nature base. Global nature based uh, carbon credits. Uh, so we uh, we managed to source it from a strategic supplier. The strategic supplier have a, a very uh, long term relationship with the developer. Um, so hence they secured um, they helped to secure 100,000 ton. In this case, 100,000 contract are the same meaning. Uh, so 100,000 ton of the carbon credit from this uh, project um, origin is Cambodia. So this carbon uh, project. The land size covered is uh, 500,000 hectares of land. And then inside this forest, there are 200, 250, 000, uh, 2,500 families living there, and it benefited uh, nearly 30,000 individuals. So these uh, communities will be um, also helping to protect the forest and that give a great job opportunities as well. And in addition to that, uh, it has biodiversity value as well. So this project comes with uh, a core benefit. They call it CCB, climate, community, and biodiversity. So it, it will give the extra value add for the, the carbon credit. On the right-hand side, uh, that's the tech base. We call it global tech base uh, carbon credits. And we source it from the same strategic supplier. Uh, managed to secure 50,000 tons from this project. And it's basically, it's a... Is a waste disposal pro a handling project and a factory in China that has the waste released and they, there's a methane gas released from the waste. They capture the methane gas and power it to the boiler. So without this project, they will be continuing to use coal powered boiler. So with this biogas recovery uh, uh, project, it will reduce, uh, it will replace the use of coal so that in 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 as a conclusion, so that will reduce the CO two from uh, from releasing to the atmosphere. So um, if you want to go into details of the project, you can always go to the Vera website, vera.org. It's a registry. It's also a library to me, uh, right? You can go and download all the reports, the PDD reports, the verification report, validation report. They are all there for you to download, and you know, and it's very transparent. You know who are the the developer and the VVB. Uh, the validation and uh, the verification body and also uh, how do they calculate and, uh, and the context. Uh. So you can easily go to the vera.org and type project ID 1748 for the Cambodia project and the project ID 2402. So the price um, that we were listed, uh, the floor price uh, here is also mentioning uh, the price are the same meaning. 
the reserve or the floor price uh, for the nature base was 68 ringgit and the tech base was um, 18 ringgit 50 cents uh. so uh, bear in mind that there are price differences uh, i believe there will be questions coming up later that i will answer uh, very soon next slide please okay uh, this is possibly the last slide uh, before we go into the q a so we we have um, signed a memorandum of collaboration with mgtc which means Malaysia Green Tech and Climate Change Corporations is uh, is an agency of the Ministry of um, Natural Resources, Energy and Climate Change. And this collaborations basically we have um, uh, we have been preparing a handbook, a VCM handbook, and also preparing a VCM directory. And third thing will be this inaugural Carbon Market Forum. Uh, please save the date, fifth of October. And the venue will be at the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center. So this will be a, a platform where the supply chains, uh, stakeholders, uh, government stakeholders, and uh, investors uh, like you guys, and also um, other uh, potential uh, buyers domestically and you know internationally, we will all in this platform and socialize with each other on this um, this uh, carbon market. Okay. Uh, just double check. There's no. Uh, let's see. Where's the, okay. Yeah, I think that's the the final slide. Lah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'm ready for Q and A. Uh, Kevin. Okay. Thank you very much, Hugh. Uh, Given for giving us a good insight into the trading of common credits on BCX. Uh, we will now move on to the Q and A session. Please raise your hand or unmute yourself, or alternatively, you can type in your questions in the chat box. Can we have the questions? Uh, hi, Hugh. I think there's a question here from uh, Hope Jen. He's asking, uh, can more Malaysian projects be qualified for carbon credit project since it's a local carbon exchange? Yes, yes. I, uh, Malaysian. Uh, carbon credits once if they are registered to Vera and issued uh, by Vera, then it will be eligible for to be listed uh, in the carbon exchange uh, for trading. Mm. Okay, and there's another question here from Omar Satri. Do carbon credits have expiry? Okay, um, Vera carbon credits uh, the 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 standard that we we accept in BCX. It has no carbon. Uh, it has no expiry date. But bear in mind that um, the the pricing curve, the price curve of the the carbon credit is the newer vintages, like for example, 2021, and the older vintages, like 2011. So the older vintages will have a lower value. The newer vintage will have a higher value. So there is no expiry date per se. But the longer you keep, the price will uh, go down to the price curve. Now. Mm. Okay. Why? Why is that the case? Uh, why is that so? Yes. Yes. Very common asked question as well. Okay. Um. I, for my um, personal uh perception is the price curve, basically um you know the the carbon carbon registry uh, uh Vera they are well well recognized so they have a list of methodology right. The methodology is basically sign-based calculations of measuring CO2. For example, the the forests, uh, uh, some big forests, they really need uh, the 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 human uh, the manpower to go and measure the trees. This year, the tree is this size. Next year, the tree is bigger and what size, you know. So um, the the methodology is continues to be improved uh, and keep to is is keeping. Uh, uh, to be revised as well. So the methodology might have been there for maybe five, uh, ten years, but the revision keeps going, right? So the 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 methodology is revised to a so-called better quality per se. Lah. So the the methodology somehow once it revised along the year, right? The people will possibly buy the newer vintage one with believe that okay, the certain methodology has been revised, and then the value would be off high standard because it's keep improving the methodology. So that's possibly one of reason. Second reason is 
they are another um, community uh, in the, the market is called COSIA, International Aviation uh, Industry, right? They, they, they set a standard of all the aviation members uh, within the, uh, in compliance of COSIA, they only accept 2016 to 2020, these vintages only for various reasons, which is uh, based on the COSIA framework. So if that's the case, the 2016 on can be accepted by aviation industry. 2015 is not, so there will be an instant price gap, right? So that will will shape the price curve accordingly. From the newer one up to 2020 is higher. Then 2015 there is no demand uh, from the aviation industry. The price curve will drop, and hence naturally the the price curve will be in uh, in down downwards towards the older vintages. Hmm. Okay, I think that's a. Uh, uh, a uh, popular question that many ones know here. Uh, how are the prices for the carbon credits determined? Okay, the prices, uh, let's look at um, uh, the cost. Huh? Uh, just now we have two projects, right? Uh, maybe Kevin, you can roll back to uh, one or two slides before the, the particularly that two projects. So the prices. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, this one, this yeah, one? yeah. The, one? the one with two project. Go down, uh, down. Yes, this one. So you can see this here. There are two type of prices there, and definitely it, it depends on the methodology that they use. So the nature based uh, ones uh, easily the, the 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 methodology they use would be the Vera uh, code is um, VM003 or 004. Uh, most of the nature based project they are the the codes are smaller one. Um, so. Um, Nature-based project generally they would need a lot of uh, uh, manpower and time to measure. For example, this forest project, five hundred thousand hectares. So five hundred thousand hectares, almost half a million of hectares. So you need a lot of uh, manpower and technology to make sure that you can measure the tree size and CO two being sequestered from year to year. And some of the high tech coming in now will be using satellite to make sure that there is no logging. You know, 500,000 hectares uh, when you are protecting left side, uh, the right side, maybe some people are logging it. So the satellite will make sure that every day monitoring the, the forest are still as it is and it's continue to grow because it will remove more CO2 from the atmosphere. And second, this project comes with CCB. They have community impact. They are community in there and then you would possibly some of the project developer they 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 are very good they they employ the community to be involved in the in the forest and help protecting the forest at the same time also safeguard that the biodiversity is kept there intact so this kind of community impact and the biodiversity value that that will make the the base price of the the project hence you can see the price are generally higher 68 ringgit per ton on the right hand side that is relatively smaller project, uh, smaller land size coverage compared to a 500,000 hectares, right? And tech base, you can easily measure the CO2 being uh, reduced from, uh, uh, you reduce the CO2 by changing the technology that is very measurable. Huh? So, and this kind of technology uh, can be easily replicated, repeated, so uh, hence the, the, the cost involved is possibly uh, far less and um, 18 ringgit 50 cents. Um, pricing wise, uh, again, there are two type of uh, markets in the in the VCM. Currently, most of the carbon credits are traded via OTC, meaning the potentially the developer once it's developed, they often will have a off taker uh, buying it from them, or else the off taker will be a big trading houses. They will sell the carbon credits to some reputable uh, end customer that they are very sensitive to ESG, they they are very care about their branding, and then they will sell the project talking about the story behind, you know, the impact. For example, there is an upcoming uh, project from Sabah, uh, which is yet to be issued. Then the, 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 the seller will talk about, oh, we have orang utan there, how many of them, and how we're going to. So this kind of value is very, very subjective, region by region. We have orang done in, in Sabah. We might not have orang done in Brazil, right? And Brazil forests are huge, you know, plenty of supply there. The supply and demand will also kick in to, to affect the pricing. And to be honest, if you go to the market and ask, I want a Brazilian carbon credit, right? They are plentiful because the, the land size in Brazil is huge. However, you switch back to Southeast Asia, right? The only 
two countries that has ample of supply of carbon credit is Indonesia and Cambodia, which is uh, what we have now here. And these two countries, unfortunately, Indonesia, um, they the governments have stopped have or have banned the export of the carbon credits because the the, the, the countries thought that they haven't finished calculating the NDC, they haven't got a proper plan that how they're going to reduce the carbon footprint by 2030, 2050. And hence, they want to put a ban first. They first calculate, make sure they have a proper roadmap before they further sell more than they should be. So in that case, in short, in South Asia, the supply of carbon credit, nature-based one, the very limited. Whereas in the west side of the world, Brazil, a lot. So this kind of supply and supply uh, uh, tightness also would affect the pricing. So OTC, generally the pricing is higher. But however, some people will go Google and search, oh, spot price, carbon credit, nature base. Hey, how come the price is smaller? Maybe about two US dollar, three US dollar. Whereas in the OTC market, like how we, uh, how the Southern carbon is currently sold in the market is uh, roughly 15 US dollar. So two, three US dollar to 15 US dollar, huge difference. Why? Because in the spot market, people, the, the exchange will uh, sell it in a standardized contract standardized basket. For example, uh, what I mentioned, the contract spread we have we will have in the spot is we categorize it into four Malaysia nature base, Malaysia tech base, global nature base, global tech base, and we only accept 2016 onwards. So you would ultimately buy in a spot market, right? I buy 100 tons of nature based carbon credit global and 100 tons inside that, it could be from anywhere. It could be from Brazil, it could be from Africa, and then it could be different kind of forests. Uh, whereas a uh, global tech base, uh, it could be from uh, a cook stove project in Africa, and it could be a wind farm project in, in China. And on top of that, the, the vintages in that standardized contract in the sport market is, you, you might find the whole basket is 20, Time is 2016, the rest are 2020. So there is, there is no, uh, you will not be able to know the basket, how uh, how how many of them are from, from, from where. So it's basically a standardized contract. Hence, because of that skepticism of, and the, the buyer will not be certain what will get from basket. So in the spot market, right, because it's standardized, uh, so the price will be, ha it will be, it will be less, uh, far lesser than the OTC market where you sell project by project. And the value is there. Mm. Okay. On the next question, given that you have actually highlighted two projects on the carbon credit uh, on this page, uh, there's one question from Mr. Market is asking: um, Why would someone pay 1850 versus 68 ringgit if the mm. carbon offset is the same? Ah, you also very widely asked questions. Okay. In terms of numbers, uh, in your subsidy report. Okay, my carbon footprint, 5,000. I would want to offset 5,000. To be honest, any price doesn't make a difference. Lah. As long as the tonnage, it offset your carbon footprint, right? There's no difference. However, for companies that they want to portray that they support certain uh, projects in South Asia because I have operation, I have branches in South Asia, uh, I, I keep expanding my operation throughout South Asia. I would like to support the South Asian government to continue to expand their forest coverage by having more nature-based carbon project. So hence, you will possibly buy a nature-based project and offset it and retire it. And in the Vera registry, uh, I have to tell you that in the Vera registry, very transparent. If your company retiring that batch of carbon credit, right, you can choose to be made public or not to make public. If you choose to be made public, you can see that in the Vera registry, someone has retired this carbon credit when when they retired and who retired. So, for example, uh, Linshu Biogas uh, project, uh, we have a participant retiring it. And during uh, when we retire the project, right, you can see from the Vera registry, University of Melbourne, it's a public information anyway, University of Melbourne has retired this Linshu Biogas uh, which year and when. So, uh, then you can incorporate it into your subsidy report saying, okay, I'm supporting this uh, kind of technology or I support this kind of project from which country because uh, I my country has an operation there. I, I got the 
uh, economic benefits through my business there. At the same time, I want to give back, you know, give back to the, the society, give back to, to the biodiversity, to the country. So this kind of story value, right, uh, it will make you uh, choose one project of another, although the tonnage is the same. So obviously different project, the price will be different. But we're not buying from the projects themselves, right? We're just buying from the market so we could be enriching the trader, not the project, right? Uh, yes, yes. You come in, you, when you buy from a trader, for example, you buy it OTC, you know what you want. Uh, let's say you tell the trader, the trader says, I want somewhere near Asia. I want something reforestation, uh, possibly with biodiversity. Then the trader will go and find for you, right? So uh, you basically you buy from a trader. Or if you are a, a regular buyer that every year I have a commitment to buying 100,000 ton from, from nature-based something in Asia, then very, uh, very often that the, the buyer will go contact to the developer to have an off tech agreement to secure a long term supply, then the price will be potentially better or else they want to deep dive into a, a, a lower cost, then they will possibly go into developing or financing the project and that they will achieve a, a low cost, but in the same high quality project. Mm. Okay, I think there's uh, further questions uh, lined up for here for you. Okay, uh, I'll read them one by one. Uh, yeah, the question is from Edwin D. Is carbon credits the same as the renewable energy credits? Ah, REC. okay. Okay, REC. Uh, carbon credits um, is like uh, in the same family as REC. So REC in Malaysia, uh, for example, uh, they are registered with IREC. And those are measured in megawatt, whereas carbon credit is measured in ton of CO2 equivalent. And then the REC in Malaysia, you can get solar REC. Also, you, you can get um, hydropower REC. Hydropower REC are mostly from the Sarawak side, Sarawak Energy. Abraham. And how would you use REC and how would you use carbon credit, right? Uh, REC, you can use that to offset your scope two which is your electricity uh, source and the carbon credits, you can use it to offset your scope one and scope three uh, of your GHG um, footprint. So these are the, the, the differences. Hmm. OK, and the next question comes from Tawaludin. Can we buy carbon credits in other exchanges via Bursa? Uh, um, OK, you can buy carbon credit via Brusa or you can buy carbon credit not with not via Brusa also possible. In fact, this is a voluntary carbon market, right? It's voluntary means very voluntary. It's not regulated. It's not a compliant market. So you can buy from anywhere uh, around the world as long as you have uh, been onboarded from uh, with the exchange. Now. So obviously being a national exchange, we do welcome. Uh, the, uh, the Malaysian company to, to purchase via the BCX because uh, we potentially will have a ringgit based product, which some of the company would prefer to not convert into US dollar to purchase. They can purchase via the ringgit. Or um, we, we also take note that we also want to welcome uh, overseas traders to purchase uh, carbon credit in Malaysia. And we also in the midst of getting uh, approval from Bank Negra to allow us to list it in US dollar and settle in US dollar. Once that uh, framework is ready, then we will, uh, we will disclose and share to the public as well. Next question comes from Ilham. How much is uh, BCX charges for the, for the fee for mm. carbon credit? OK, um, we charge by a percentage of the value. So we charge 0.8% of the 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 carbon credit value and currently we have just launched the exchange so we do have a promotional period promotion period and we reduce the fee down to 0.2 percent for both buyer and seller so uh, next year um, the promotion period is over then it will go back to 0.8 percent but uh, while we are on this topic i do want to mention one thing is um, if the company is on board as a participant uh, be it supplier or trader or buyer seller, uh, within this year, there is a waiver of the six thousand ringgit onboard fee, onboarding fee. So please take this opportunity. We have roughly 
a uh, few months to go, uh, please uh, be onboarded as a participant while it's still free. Uh, there's waiver. If you pass that deadline, 31st of December, then you charge 6,000 ringgit. Lah. So instantly it's a saving for you guys. So please feel free to submit your application form. Right. Um, we have another question from Manchin. He's asking, um, when will be the next auction? Okay, very good questions. Although we are still in a, in the making of, you know, our OTC uh, trading platform and the spot trading platform. Um, in fact, we are closely uh, monitoring the progress of the upcoming Kwamut project. Uh, this, uh, potentially, la, the first Vera issued nature-based carbon project from Malaysia. You can go to the Vera.org, you search by country origin. You can see there is one project called Kwamut in Sabah. That forest is covers about 80,000 hectares and uh, is developed by a very experienced developer. And the project proponent is Yasan Sabah, landowner is Sabah Forestry Department. Um, there, it's a. I was told by the the developer is a triple goal, triple goal a CCB. La. So, uh, it's a high quality carbon credits. Whether we're gonna have a another auction, which is Malaysia nature based for this project, uh, stay tuned. We will we will disclose. Uh, if it is decided uh, among the managements. Uh. But at the same time, we are designing uh, uh, the trading platform that will allow OTC trade among the participants and also the spot trading as well. Uh. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I cannot so answer you. Mm. Yeah. So if it's a nature base, it's be, it will be quite pricey, lah, I suppose, as compared to you know, uh, the jet power gen and whatnot, right? So it's yeah. going to be what, above 60 odd? Yeah, yeah I would, what it, Another way, la, it's foresee of higher value la, because uh, different value is perceived by different uh, end customer. So since this is a first uh, nature-based carbon project from Malaysia, some countries who have their decarbonization policy that I only buy nature-based or some of them, I don't care on, as long as the tonnage you know, can offset my carbon film. That would be okay. And when uh, ESG sensitive investor come in, okay, I want to shop around, see which counter I want to buy, right? They will possibly go and compare, okay, which one will advocate more nature, or some of them maybe more technology. Um, then how do they decide what vintage they buy? So those possibly it's uh, one of the considerations that ESG investor fund managers will be looking at. Will be looking at mm. I think I've covered most of the questions. Um, you know, if there are any other questions from the participants, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the, the number of questions that you all are putting up on the chat. Uh, it's because we have quite a volume uh, number of people here, about 200 participants here. So if I have missed any, uh, if, if, uh, you know, please type in the chat again or, or raise your hand or you know, unmute yourself to ask the question yourself. But there's another question here, um, follow-up question from Manchin. Is the Malaysian mm. project sourced directly from the project developer or from a trading company? Um, maybe we are, we haven't decided whether there's uh, auction yet. Lah, and at the same time, when the project will be made ready, um, then maybe there's no such information that we will be able to share for now. Uh, but definitely it will be a competitive price. Lah. Uh, from the uh, from the source. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, I react to you. That's another question from Tuan Pei. What is the projected growth of carbon credit trading volume? Is there any such projection? Mm, carbon credit trading volume, very good questions. If uh, it is related to BCX per se, um, obviously we are a newly established carbon exchange and we just started our first launch by way of auctions. And in fact, there are a lot of education required, uh, likewise like the webinar today. And we have um, received overwhelming inquiries 
uh, from various sectors, be it timber industry, oil and gas industry, and financial industry. So we, how we want to grow the market is also how quick we can uh, do, uh, you know, knowledge capacity building uh, and stuff like that. But obviously, um, uh, being a uh, bursa carbon exchange, we also try to be a, a voluntary carbon market uh, ecosystem builder. So we help to connect the dot. We try to be a facilitator to connect uh, the ministry to those companies uh, are willing to develop uh, carbon credits. So by connecting the dots via a single platform is uh, that's why that is why we have signed MOC, uh, Memorandum of Co uh, Cooperation with the the Ministry of um, uh, NREC, uh, the agency called MGTC, right? So the VCM handbook. In one handbook, we will we will have input from all the states, governments, and also all the um, uh, a list of consultant, a list of developer that uh, potentially someone want to start a project, who they can contact, and who are the potential validator available in Malaysia that can uh, do the validation job and verification. So all in one handbook. So uh, mm -hmm. building a VCM ecosystem it takes time, but likewise they are. Uh, exponential growth in other exchanges which has been established uh, many years ago. Uh, they are um, uh, market talk talking about, you know, as we are close to the 2030 and as there are more companies and more countries are committed to their uh, decarbonization goal and the demand is growing, but at the same time, the supply is not catching up fast enough. For example, this uh, um, this upcoming Sabah Kwamud project, right? If you go to the Vera registry, you can see the date that they registered the carbon credits was 2015. That is the time that they re submit the, the proposal to the Vera. And now we are on 2021 and they are still in the, uh, at the midst of validations. So sometimes nature-based projects take years to materialize. So if the demand is expected to grow fast and um, and the supply is uh, currently very tight and won't be able to have uh, a technology that can scale up the, the issuance of carbon credit, then you will see potentially see a, a high demand, low supply kind of situation. In that case, uh, the growth, I would say, potentially will be, will be, will be high. And you can see uh, in the other exchanges which are well established, you can track the growth rate. I think they have been growing uh, year by year and just take an example from a registry business point of view. La. They are a non-profit organization for like Vera. They're currently having a bottleneck of, uh, you know, answering the inquiry and approving the PDD. They sometimes reject the proposal and they have to, you know, the, the proponent have to resubmit again and they have to read the validation report and make sure the verification report also capture in, uh, you know, um, correct information of CO2. So these are our bottlenecks. Uh has made the, the, the Vera uh, body very busy. And you can see this uh, Southern Carbon project, right? We actually source from the supplier. Um, uh, vintage 2021 is freshly, freshly issued right after the new year. So you can see now we are 2023, but the Vintage 21 was just freshly issued. There is a bottleneck of two years for even making issuance. Uh. So uh, with, if that's the case, you know, with such a, uh, more and more companies are committing to the decarbonization and the supply is tight. So potentially the growth will be quite vibrant. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay, there's uh, one last question on the chat here. How does one control the condition imposed by the minister that the Malaysian carbon credits uh, that are sold to foreigners are not uh, used for the foreign countries NCD? Mm -hmm. Very good question. So the for 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 um NDC for CBAM uh, cross border adjustments uh, uh those uh, framework national G two G they have they must have a uh, uh, agreements uh, for the, for them to to off to offset the carbon footprint from one country to another right so it's always a G two G bilateral uh currently Malaysia we didn't sign with anyone. So for a country to claim that, okay, I purchased a carbon credit from Sabah, for example, I want to bring it back to my country and offset my NDC, right? First, they must contact the Malaysia government because the agreements binding to government, uh, government that 
they must do the align the reporting and movements, monitoring the movements of the carbon credit from one country to another. So uh, as of now, um, as per my knowledge, there is no um, G2G uh, agreements between Malaysia to any country. However, if you can read from the public news that uh, after the recent COP26 or 27, the New Zealand start to form a G2G uh, agreements with Ghana. So this by government uh, agreements will allow them to, to monitor, to allow the carbon credit being transfer from Ghana to Switzerland. And that's where you, you, the government will assure that the carbon credit movements are, will not be, uh, be, be accounted for for respect uh, countries and DC. Okay, any, any last uh, questions? Because uh, if not, then we'll uh, be closing off. I don't, I don't see any questions on the chat right now about you. Mm. And anyway, um, okay. thank you so much for sparing your time with us through going through thank this webinar. Right? Thank you. Um, it's my I'm pleasure. Sure, yeah, if any questions, uh, some of these participants can actually uh, contact you directly, right? right. Mm. Yeah. And, and the slides will be, some will be shared, uh, will be shared to these participants. And if there are no further questions, we will conclude with today's presentation. And mm -hmm. thank you once again for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.